got a little seam here with a few objects that I've imported into SketchUp. To start, let's first take a look at the UVs here and see how Vary Next can improve our workflow. As you can see, the material didn't apply well since there are no proper UVs. In V-Ray 3.6, as well as V-Ray Next, I can right-click and head down to the V-Ray UV Tools menu, where you'll find a list of options here for fixing these UVs. In V-Ray Next, we've now made these UV tools easier to find by adding them to the toolbar on the top right for quick access. As you can see, as soon as I click the button, the texture preview updated instantly to reflect the new UVs. Next, if I select another material, let's say this asphalt stamped brick material, and try to apply it to the sphere, you'll notice that nothing about the sphere's appearance changes. This is because the paver's brick material has been assigned to the sphere's face, but the asphalt material has been assigned to the sphere's group. Just like in SketchUp, Viri will prioritize the face material assignment over a group material. You can confirm this up here in the Entity Info tray, where you'll see that the asphalt appears for the group. In order to apply the asphalt to the sphere, I just need to make sure that the sphere's group is selected and remove all the materials on it. To do so, I'm going to click on the new button we've added to remove materials up here in the top right. And let's give it a moment here to load. Okay, and now we can see that the sphere has turned white, indicating that all the materials have been removed. This time, the sphere updates to reflect the new material, indicating that we've successfully applied the asphalt to the sphere's group. All right, now let's move on to the next scene here. In Vray Next, we've introduced the brand new scene interaction tool to make navigating and inspecting a scene's object hierarchy easier than ever. To show you how navigating the object hierarchy works, I have a group here containing two groups within for each little house. If I click on either house, you can see that they are grouped together and have no materials supplied to them. And I'll show you how the scene interaction tool can conveniently display this information. When I select it up here in the top right corner, a set of circular rings will appear when I hover over any object in my scene. Each separate ring here represents a level in the object's group hierarchy, with the innermost ring representing the object's face that my cursor is hovering over. I can easily navigate up the group hierarchy by holding down the shift key and moving the mouse outwards towards the next ring. Once my cursor enters a new ring, you'll see the boundary box shift from the face on the house to the whole house. Still holding shift, if I move my cursor into the outermost ring, you'll see the boundary box shifts to highlight the entire group. This allows you to very easily see the hierarchy of the objects and navigate between them, which is especially useful for more complex scenes containing a lot of geometry and groups. Okay, let's move on to the next scene and I'll now show you how the Scene Interaction tool can be used to inspect your objects in a more complex scenario. And I'll also inspect the material hierarchy as well. If I hover over this house on the left, you'll notice two small colored circles in the middle at the top. These circles correspond to the material inheritance in this house's hierarchy. The top circle, which is purple and intersects the outermost ring, is applied to a group containing both this house and the pink house on the right. The lower circle, which intersects the middle ring, represents a wooden material, which is applied to this house specifically, which you can see. Now, if I hover over this house on the right and move my cursor over the pink roof, you'll see that an additional pink semicircle has appeared intersecting with the innermost ring. This indicates that this pink material has been assigned to the front face of the roof, while the semicircle means that the back of the face just has the group's wooden material assigned. Meanwhile, the three rings indicate the face I'm hovering over, the group it belongs to, in this case the house, and the main group that the house belongs to. Again, to switch between the hierarchies, all I have to do is simply hold shift and move the mouse towards the respective ring. Then, while holding shift, I can click on the ring to switch to the corresponding group, which is indicated by the additional boundary box that appears. Now that we've got the outer ring for the entire group selected, you can also see over in the Entity Info panel tray that the purple material is showing, indicating that it has been applied to this entire group. 